Hello everybody, what is up? Welcome back to my channel. So today I have a Goodwill thrift with me and haul to resell on my Poshmark. If you guys are new to my channel, I'm a part-time reseller on Poshmark and Mercari. I do this on top of my eight to five desk job. I fit it all, all on top of my 40 hour work schedule. It's been uh, almost a month since the last time I went thrifting, so it felt real good to finally go again. I kind of had gotten out of it a little bit. I feel like I was a little rusty, you know, like when you take a vacation from a job and you go back to it and you're like, what do I do? That's kind of how I felt. I was very overwhelmed. The first time I went, I actually did not find a whole lot, but then the second time I found some pretty decent things. I started with a full cart and then I ended up only getting three items. So it was all right, but one of the things that I found was a $400 designer purse. So that was great. I usually don't buy the stuff that's behind the case because typically it's pretty overpriced, but this was actually a really good deal. So I'm excited to show you guys what I got there. And so since this is a small haul, I'm combining two hauls from two different trips just to show you guys because I don't want you to be bored. So <laughs> I'll let you guys know where I got each item from, if it was from the first Goodwill or the second Goodwill. But yeah, sometimes it'd be like that, you know? Sometimes you go to the thrift store and you really don't find that much stuff, but it's okay because I'd rather find nothing and buy nothing rather than settle for something that I wanted to buy just to justify my time spent there because it's not gonna do you any good if it doesn't sell. So there's that. So without further ado, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, don't forget to give this video a thumbs up. Leave me a comment down below. Have you guys been finding good stuff lately or is it just me? Like, I feel like thrifting has been a bust. Like I had really good luck in February and now it's just not great. So how are the thrift stores for you? And if you like this video and you like my content and you wanna watch more thrifting content, don't forget to subscribe with the subscribe button down below, wherever the heck it is at this point in time. So let's just jump right into it. I'm gonna save the best for last, of course. Also, I just wanna say this hat reminds me of Pringles and it makes me wanna eat a Pringle. Anyway. So I started off by looking in the sweaters. The first sweater that I found was a postmark by Anthropology sweater. It was this one. And a year ago, I probably would have bought this sweater. Same with the Free People sweater that's coming up next. But I am trying not to buy it anymore because it just doesn't sell really well for me. Some intricate pieces do, but these basic, especially gray pieces, don't sell for me at all. So I don't get it anymore. This Elizabeth and James sweater was so cute, but the comps were all over the place, so I didn't bother with it. I think they sell this brand at Kohl's now. This was another anthropology dress. I know that this brand sells for a lot, but it wasn't my style, so I left it. This Madewell sweater it was so cute, but it had a lot of wash wear. It was like crispy, so I left it. <laughs> and this Show Me Your Moo Moo kimono do not buy it came in a fab fit fun box and they're selling next to nothing on poshmark so i got really excited when i found that and i was like god dang it <laughs> those kimonos will get you i feel like a lot of people come across those they're everywhere yeah back to free people and anthropology Super cute brands that sell for a lot of money, but their basic stuff just doesn't sell. Free People Movement gets a lot of attention in my closet, but doesn't really sell super fast. So if it's a bins find, I will definitely go for it. But if it's not, I tend to leave it more often than not. If it was like a floral piece or like a newer piece, I think I would have gotten it. But especially the gray stuff. I don't know why. Something about gray does not sell. I just think it's boring. I don't know. I love gray. I wear it all the time. Okay, this Urban Outfitter shirt was still on the website for $44, so I grabbed it to get the price because it didn't have a tag. If something doesn't have the tag, it's worth asking because they'll usually give you a pretty good deal on it. I don't know why. It might just be because they're not researching it in the back or something, but the rest of this stuff was pretty boring so nothing really interesting to talk about lots of like walmart brands loft so i ended up leaving a lot behind pretty sure a lot of this stuff was items that i had seen the last time i came thrifting at this store which was over a month ago so kind of crazy that it's not moving i don't know maybe people don't really feel like shopping anymore I love this style of shirt. 
if I didn't already have similar ones to it, I probably would have bought this for myself. It's just such a flattering style, but I don't think it was any kind of brand. This shirt is a Harley Davidson shirt. I probably would have bought it if it was at the bins to at least bleach dye. I've had a lot of luck selling bleach dye clothes lately. It makes a basic piece stand out a little bit more. I actually had a Harley shirt unbleached for a while with no love in my closet, but as soon as I bleached it and I relisted it, it sold pretty quickly. So just a little tip if you find a shirt like that. Junk food sells pretty well, but again, something I probably would have gotten at the bins and not here. This was a Neon Buddha sweater in really good condition. I put it in my cart to look up comps. Neon Buddha is a really good brand that sells for quite a lot at Nordstrom. This aloe tag was so old. I didn't even know aloe was around that long, but I left it because it looked like a really old style. It didn't even say aloe on it. So these are the things that I left behind. This was a Title IX dress, and I'm curious to know if you guys have experience selling that. The neon Buddha cardigan I left. This is an anthropology cardigan I left. I would have gotten this, but it had a ton of damage on the bottom. I sold a pretty similar style recently, and these Lululemon shorts had a hole in the crotch, so I left them. I was so sad about that. They were only like $5, and they were men's, which sells pretty quickly. I took it to the front and the lady just said they were going to throw it out, so there's that. The first thing that I got from the first thrift store was these Sorel boots. I love Sorel's for personal use, I've had a pair for about 10 years and they're still kicking. But these are waterproof rain boots, they were just kind of chilling with the Sorel logo in the back and this is the only thing I found that day, but these were $10.99, so I'm not even complaining because these resell for around 80 to 90. I think these will go pretty quickly. Sorrels are popular and I love things that people are searching for consistently on Poshmark. Brands like Sorel, Hunter, I've had good luck selling Keens and Chacos. So these are outdoor brands that retail for a lot tend to do really well on Poshmark. So I have these listed for 90 and I've been sending out offers for like 70. But guys, these are like brand new, amazing. Amazing. The next thing that I got, which here's a little hack for you, is this shirt from Urban Outfitters. It did not have a tag on it. And sometimes I'll bother with this, sometimes I don't. But if you get the right person, sometimes they'll give you a really good deal on things that don't have a tag. So she gave this to me for $1.99. If it was any more than that, I don't think I would have picked it up because Urban Outfitters doesn't resell for a whole lot. But I thought this was a cute spring style. This like, robin egg blue color is really in so is velvet i thought it was just like a really current nice style it probably won't sell for more than like 25 dollars, but i still thought it was a cute piece that would do well so i got that like i said i wouldn't pay more than like probably three dollars for this but for dollar 99 i was like hell yeah the next thing that i got were these soft surroundings leggings and these look like the Spanx liquid leggings almost. They've got like a cracked leather. They've got a nice like little panel on the side here. And I was a soft surroundings hater, but then I picked up a cardigan from them that was pretty cute. It was like a long duster style and it sold very quickly for I think, it was definitely around 50 bucks or so. And the comps for this were in the 40s range. So I love liquid leggings. I like selling soft surroundings now. I'm a change woman, so I decided to get these and they were only $5.99, so not bad. Okay, last and most certainly not least, I found this designer bag that resells for around $100, but it retails for about $400. And I could not believe my littlest eyes when I saw this behind the case, because I was like, wait, that's actually really cute and it's in good condition. So it's the Rebecca Minkoff Carson camera bag, and it has a big old tassel. It has rose gold hardware. The hardware could definitely use some love. Um, it's a little scratched. I don't really know how to fix that. I'm just gonna have to disclose it in the listing but the back of it has like no denim transfer, which if you've ever had a Rebecca Minkoff bag, you know about the <laughs> denim transfer is real. Like I have one that is just so busted. 
Um, oh, I didn't realize it said final sale, whatever. So this was only $13. The inside is in just fabulous condition. It looks so nice. And I love the thick strap on this. It's a little different. So you can wear it cross body and it's adjustable. Like I said, the comps for this were around $100. So not too shabby. It doesn't seem like a style that would be faked. I'd be more concerned about the Rebecca Minkoff like Mab or Mac bags being fit, uh, faked, but this one seems like a more unique piece, so I didn't really take too much into account. But one thing that I look for when it comes to designer purses is I always check the stitching. The stitching is always a dead giveaway of if it's fake or not. Um, this one has really consistent even stitching and the logo. I mean, all of it, all of it just looks real. The, the hardware seems nice. It doesn't seem like plastic or crappy, which I know there's like super fakes out there right now, but this one just did not seem like a fake to me. So. Yes, I got a $400 designer bag for $13, crazy. So anyway, that is everything that I thrifted in the last week from Goodwill. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Again, if you did, don't forget to give it a thumbs up. Leave me a comment down below and subscribe. It really helps my videos in the algorithm. So anyway, I will see you guys next time. Bye.